This leader, as you can see, it's a double actin set of bellows here. For a lot of these leather panels here, they would originally have been oiled with neat foot oil to keep the leather supple, so it didn't crack in use. Once it was laid up, it would have start to dry out and crack, which and it was actually, there were several pretty holes ah, through the surface, so it was just leaking the whole time. So you couldn't have raised any air into the tube here at all. But it was so oily we couldn't have glue it, so we degreased whatever the hole was with acetone. And then we made up pretty round leather patches, as you can see, and we used a contact adhesive to stick over each hole and, t and left that to completely dry out for a couple of days. And then we re softened out the leather with neat's foot oil again, so it was lovely and well, it's so old it can never be as pliable as it was when it was as good new as it can be. And as you see, when you operate the, the handle to, to pump, the bottom set of bellows is creating a pressure which is raising a, a sort of a panel here that just works with, with gravity on the top bellows. So that once you get it going, you get an almost continual flow of pressure up to the tube. The, the main head here it creates the, the extra oxygen into your fire is called the tube. And you, you fill the, the, the fire pan here with, with smitty coil, got it all lighted, and then once it was really hot and stopped it smoking, and you had a lovely glowing fire, you can put in your iron and hit it up and take it to the anvil and Mac whatever you're going to mac. This forge is very unusual in that the whole of the firebox here is cast. It's been cast in a foundry. Which is very, very unusual. I hadn't seen one before. And the tube is even cast into this separate panel here. And you can see there's been a maker's name up there in that panel at the top. We'd love the king who made it. But it was Brian Johnson that restored all the metal work and Got it sandblasted and painted and everything. Section there, that's where the water was. Either for quenching metal if you were wanting to harden it, or quite often if you have a long steel bar, supposing you had this steel bar here and you just wanted to do something to a bit of it here, and you needed that section right hot, but the rest had to be cool because you didn't want to deform it, you would take it over to the water and with a pretty jug you would cool. Once it was red hot, you would cool the bit if you want it to stay the way it was, to allow you to work or bind or straighten or compress the bit in the middle. Quite often in a bar you want a thicker bit. Well, how are you going to make it thicker? The only way is to hit the whole thing in the fire, because you yeah. have no control really. You just hit a piece of wood that much. And you take it out and pour water over the bit that's staying thin, and then you get it down the heel of the anvil there, and you hit it on the end, and the bit that's right hot will start fattening, and the whole thing starts shortening. And that, that's, that's the bit that you needed heavier for some reason. And to find it cast, normally they've just bent it up with a bit of tin. Done in a big foundry in an ironworks. Delightful thing. <laughs>